What's going on guys, this is Mike Noid, and today I'll be comparing and contrasting two Toys for Life franchises. Toys for Life is a pretty cool feature in video games. You take a physical figure or toy and scan it using NFC or RFID communication and it will react in some shape or form with the game. It was insanely popular back in 2011 through 2017 as we had a bunch of companies and video game series try to capitalize on the Toys for Life market. Disney Infinity used popular Disney Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars characters in three different games where you can play through levels or be creative in Toy Box. LEGO Dimensions used actual LEGO minifigures and builds from Warner Brother properties that allow you to play a standard LEGO game. I mean, instead of just unlocking characters like normally, you need to fork over some real life studs. Starlink Battle for Atlas is an open world game that lets you use physical spaceships, pilots, and weapon attachments to customize your layout in the game. Or you could just buy them digitally. I mean, that works too. Those are some of the major Toys of Life franchises, but today I wanted to compare and contrast arguably the two most successful ones, Skylanders and Amiibo. Now Skylanders wasn't the first Toys of Life concept as UB Funkies and Famps were computer games that came out beforehand, but in 2011 Skylanders fully captured that magical feeling of putting a physical toy onto a portal to transport it into the game. The Skylanders franchise was a huge success, earning Toys for Bob and Activision a sh ton of money. The Toys of Life market was <laughs> booming, so it was only a matter of time before we saw other companies take advantage. Nintendo announced Amiibo during E3 of 2014, with the first wave being figures in the Super Smash Bros series. Years later, Amiibo have been released from other video game series, some even not from Nintendo's IPs. Of course, Amiibo work differently than Skylanders or other Toys of Life franchises. Amiibo aren't required to use to play a game, although some Amiibo lock away certain games features. Go ahead and pick up a Skylanders game without any figures. Hell, you might not even make it past the title screen if you don't even have a portal. Figures are required. Now for the most part, you only need one Skylander figure to start playing and go as far as beating it. Spyro's Adventure, Giant, Swap Force, Trap Team, and Imaginators on console only require you to use one figure. Spyro's Adventure, Giant's, Swap Force and Trap Team on the 3DS requires you to scan in two figures since they allow you to hold more than one character in the game. Superchargers on console require one Skylander and one land vehicle and Skylanders on 3DS and Wii require one Skylander and one Sky Vehicle. Even with just two Skylander figures, you'll notice that the game still feels limited as there will be gates you can't get through or achievements you can unlock without owning more figures. Now you don't need to own the entire entire roster of characters to unlock everything in the game. Each Skylander game has its own requirements on what you'll need to 100% complete it. Like I mentioned earlier, Amiibo aren't required to play the game they're associated with. You can play Super Smash Bros without scanning a single figure player. You can race in Mario Kart 8 without any of the track suits. You can fight monsters and explore the world of Metroid Dread without scanning the Samus and Emi Amiibo. Most Amiibo support nowadays is just a quick scan that drop some helpful items, but none of that is needed to play the game. There has been only one major game that Nintendo published that Amiibo were required, and it was Nintendo's biggest flop. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Now, if you don't know what this game is, first of all, <laughs> I don't blame you for not knowing. <laughs> it was on the Wii U for Christ's sake. But the most accurate description I can give you is a much worse version of Mario Party, but with Animal Crossing characters. So what happened? Why did requiring you to use figures for a game work for Activision and Toys for Bob, but not for Nintendo? Well, there's three reasons. The first is that the game was Wii U'd. Amiibo Festival was exclusive on Nintendo's worst selling console, while Skylanders was available on all platforms, <laughs> including the Wii U. The second reason is the gameplay is just straight up boring. Skylanders is an immersive game where you fight enemies and level up your character to make them stronger. Amiibo Festival is just placing the figure on the game pad to do every single action, and the game is mostly just a bunch of text. The third reason is 100% opinion based, but I mean, 
Which figures look cooler? Yeah, Animal Crossing is a popular Nintendo franchise, but it just didn't translate well to a Toys of Life game. Animal Crossing works best as the farming sim we know, and that's proven with the success of New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch. If you own any of these figures, you know that they are compatible with certain games. Skylanders compatibility is pretty simple. Kind of. As each new Skylander game released, the previous Skylander game's roster of figures would be compatible with the new game. For example, all Spyro's adventure figures worked with all the Skylander games. Some figures from newer Skylander games would also work in previous titles. The franchise made repost figures, also known as Series 2, Series 3, and Series 4 figures. As long as that character is in the game, it will work. Amiibo, on the other hand, have compatibility all over the place. Nintendo has a whole page dedicated to showing which Amiibo are compatible with Switch games. Most games only read the amiibo. Games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Fire Emblem Engage can read amiibo to receive items. So you'll be able to use most figures. There are only three games on the Switch that actually saves data onto the figures themselves. Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Splatoon 2, and Splatoon 3. Smash allows amiibo to fight as figure players which are like CPUs but they learn how to fight as they level up, making them much tougher than regular CPUs. Splatoon 2 and 3 use the Splatoon series amiibo to unlock some additional content and save your preferred outfits. If you have any iteration of the Inkling Girl, it can work in all three games. However, you can only have save data from one game. So if you have an outfit saved from Splatoon 3 on the amiibo but want to use it in Smash Bros, then you'll need to delete that save data. Something I find interesting about these two franchises is how differently they treated their advertising, mainly commercials. The one Sky Skylanders commercial that remains to be my favorite is the first one of Spyro's adventure. It introduces the Skylanders and main villain and the concept of Toys of Life in an exciting and fun manner. The following TV commercials always stuck with me because of how they sparked the collector side of me. I just like seeing how great these figures look together and it made me want to be these kids with a full set of Skylanders ready to be teleported into the world of Skylands. TV commercials for the later games follow the same formula just highlighting the new gimmick of the game. Amiibo, on the other hand, yeah, not so good. Mario and Peach together. Me and Gina together. The initial announcement video with Bill Trennan was alright. It introduced the Smash Bros Amiibo and how they would work. There weren't really any dedicated TV commercials for Amiibo since they were more of an additional piece to a certain game. Japan got a few commercials focusing on Amiibo functionality, but it just seems too informative. Nothing to really entice you to go out and collect all the Amiibo. But no Amiibo advertisement is as famous as the gameplay and quest for the Amiibo YouTube video. Not even Steve from Stranger Things could save this ad. I mean, <laughs> just look at this game store. They're overstocked on Smash Bros and Mario Kart 8 games. My boy Jack just wanted to smash, and I'm not talking about the game. Yes! Come on! Hey! So let's take a look at the packaging for Skylanders and Amiibo. These are the basic and most common forms of packaging. We got a Mega Ram Spyro from Skylander Swap Force and Sephiroth and Kazuya from the Super Smash Bros series. Both are packaged pretty similar. You have the figures showcased in a bubble of plastic and have screenshots of the game and how to use the figures. Now you could open a Skylander, but for those who choose not to, you can still use it in the game. Amiibo used to have this stupid foil shield on the bottom so you couldn't f use it without taking it out of the box. It wasn't until pretty recently Nintendo said, hey, you know what? That was pretty stupid of us. Let's fix that. They don't do that a lot but I'm glad they did here. Amiibo look really good in box, which is why I keep some of the new ones unopened. The Smash Bros Amiibo are the only ones I will always take out the box because at this point, it's, you know, kind of late to keep them sealed. And I actually wanted to use them. I actually wanted to use them as figure players in the game. So I always thought it'd be pretty cool to have every Smash Bros figure and be able to have a big old tournament with my Amiibo. I don't know, that's just me. When you open the Skylanders figure, you not only get the figure, but also a character card and sticker sheet. The sticker sheet displays the unique code for the figure, but it was mainly used to help you keep track of your collection by using them to update your poster from the starter pack. And the character card 
I mean, it, it didn't really do anything. It, it just shows the official artwork of the Skylander and its stats. It's just a cool little addition. But when it comes to Amiibo, uh, there isn't anything included with the figure. Even Skylanders from Superchargers and Imaginators stopped including cards. While I do prefer having these cool extras with the figure, it prevented me from wanting to buy Skylanders used. I wanted to add the card to my collection and add the sticker to my poster. So you couldn't do that with used figures from GameStop. But since Amiibo were just the figures, I had no problem buying figures used. Speaking of pricing, these are some expensive ass pieces of plastic. Here in America, single packs of regular Skyliners from Spyro's Adventure, Giants, Swap Force, and Trap Team were $9.99. Amiibo back in 2015 were $12.99, but nowadays basically go for $15.99. Now there's price variations from both series. Skylanders had triple packs of regular Skylanders that went for $24.99. So you can save five bucks buying one of these rather than buying three individual figures for $30. The gimmick Skylanders, which consisted of Giants, Swap Force, and Trap Masters, were the most expensive at $14.99. The light core figures from Giants and Swap Force figures that lit up on the portal were $12.99. Supercharger characters also went for $12.99 and vehicles went for $14.99. And finally, Imaginator Skylanders went for about $14.99. Amiibo also come in different shapes and sizes. You have the Animal Crossing Amiibo cards, which go for six bucks for a pack of six cards, and different size variations of Monster Hunter Amiibos that go for different amounts of your hard earned money. But those are all retail prices. And as you may know, they don't sell Skylanders in stores anymore. So what's the price for these figures second hand? In my experience, Skylander figures are much more common to come across, especially in lots, while you see more listings for Amiibo individually. You can find most Skylanders below 10 bucks, while the more rare ones can go for anywhere up to 100 bucks. Amiibo figures are a bit more sought after. I mean, they are Nintendo products after all. There aren't really any common Amiibos out there. Maybe the Super Mario Amiibo series are going to be the cheapest you'll find nowadays hold on <laughs> wait a minute I, uh, scratch that the animal crossing amiibo figures not the cards the figures are some of the most useless pieces of plastic of course you also have some of the most expensive ones that go for over a hundred dollars one of the most famous expensive skylanders out there is robo from imaginators which can go for over four hundred dollars not only were very little figures produced but robo itself unlocks a level in the imaginators game lost imaginite mines playing through this level is required to 100 percent complete the game so it makes sense why this figure is so sought after over on the Amiibo side, you have QB, a character from the game series Box Boy that was released on the 3DS and Switch. Despite his very simple design, he was only released in Japan, therefore can go for well over $400 brand new. God damn, I could literally make this one with a piece of paper. It wouldn't be a Skylanders vs. Amiibo video if we didn't talk about the time the two franchises collaborated to make Sky Amiibo. Skylanders Superchargers got two guest star characters from Nintendo, Turbo Charged Donkey Kong and Hammer Slam Bowser. These two not only worked as Skylanders, but when you twist their base, they become Amiibo that can be used in Smash Bros or, you know, scan in some items. Donkey Kong and Bowser also got their own vehicles, the Barrel Blaster and the Clown Cruiser. These vehicles aren't Amiibo, so they only work in the Skylanders franchise. These figures were available when Superchargers released on September 20th of 2015. Donkey Kong and his vehicle were in the Wii U starter pack, and Bowser and his vehicle were in the 3DS and Wii starter packs. Of course, these figures were made available separately a bit later. On top of that, these four figures received dark variants that were only available in the Dark Edition starter packs of the Wii U and Wii respectively. While these eight figures are interesting and fun additions to own, not everyone can use them. These figures only work in the Nintendo versions of Skylander games, so if you play Superchargers on Xbox or PlayStation, you couldn't play as these characters. 
Nintendo has always been protective of their IP, so it didn't surprise me that Donkey Kong and Bowser were unplayable on non-Nintendo platforms. However, I do understand why this made people upset. It pretty much made Xbox and PlayStation versions of the Skylander games incomplete since you couldn't use every character of the Skylanders roster. I will say though, as one of the six people that owned a Wii U, it was nice to get a win for once. I collect both Skylanders and Amiibo, so the biggest question is, which do I like better? For one, I gotta give credit to both franchises as their figures are both great quality. Skylanders were presented as toys you want to pick up and play with so they needed to look good, especially since these characters that most kids would meet for the first time at the store. I think Skylanders were pretty consistent, but you can tell the quality got better each game release, especially for Superchargers and Imaginators, probably since the figures got more expensive. Amiibo from the beginning have always been good. The Mario Amiibo from Smash Bros is still one of my favorites today and it was one of the first ones released. Amiibo did have trouble with some of the faces of the more human looking ones along with some questionable support stand colors. Not only does Link look more like a lonk, but why the f did they make this stand yellow? The Smash Bros series figures were based off their character artwork so in order to have them in certain poses, they need to have some sort of support. Clear is the best color option or no color option, which is what they started doing from now on. But by far, my favorite support is the blue fire for the Joker amiibo. And it has a good face, so they got better with that too. Even though both figures look great displayed, I mainly have amiibo shown off while Skylanders are stored away in bins. Since there are many different game series that are represented in figure form that I like, I'd rather show those off more than the figures that only come from just one series. Also, I don't nearly own as many amiibos as I do Skylanders. Even though I display my amiibos, I say I'm more attached to my Skylander figures. Amiibos now are just used to get something in a game just by simply scanning it. I mean, how am I supposed to get attached to something like that? Skylanders are characters you can grow and level up to make them stronger along your journey through Skylands. Look, not everyone knows what a windup is, but I love this guy. The closest attachment you can get to amiibos are from training them in Smash. Yeah, it's cool to make an unstoppable force of nature, but there's nothing much else to it. It may be a nostalgia thing, but goddamn, Skylanders was the best Toys of Life series. As a lot of people can agree with me, the huge reason why Skylanders were so popular was because of these figures and collecting them. At the end of the day, Amiibos are what's left standing. You don't need the new Link Amiibo to enjoy what Tears of the Kingdom has to offer. They're just cool figures of beloved characters that have an extra feature. I don't know if this is a hot take, but I'd rather get Amiibo than Pops any day of the week. That's why I feel Amiibo have lasted this long and it's why Nintendo will keep making them. As far as Toys for Life, specifically Skylanders, there may not be any out right now, but in the future, I can see Activision and Toys for Bob reviving Skylanders one last time. I mean, hopefully after this Microsoft deal goes well, <laughs> finally we can get a new Skylanders. Oh, God damn it! Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know which Toy to Life franchise is the best down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bro, I just want a Kirby Sky Amiibo. Is that too much to ask for?